That is Robbie Triano. I am not. Utah or the field in Big 12 football. We are. I was looking at today. I was doing the calculations. We are less than 150 days away from football season. We're getting closer to football wow. season. Spring football is here. Our spring games are happening this month, which rocks. Um, honestly, body of work, full roster. Utah is a, a wagon, a bookshelf in the Big 12. And the schedule favors the Utes. I in the question of them or the field, who do you go with? I think right now you have to say Utah. Even though I do think this league has some of the best quarterback play we've seen in a really long time. Like if you were to compare this league to the year that Baylor won the Big 12 championship, mm-hmm. like that league had some of the worst quarterback play. Like it was really, really bad. But you look at this year. Hey, Cam what are you saying about Utah. Gary Bohannon? Shut up. He's back. Well, he's back now. <laughs> he's back now at BYU. But you have Utah Cam rising. Like, yeah. I hope that he comes back and he is healthy because I think that is a major reason why yeah. I think we have Utah being this good team or this team that is going to be the clear cut winner in the Big 12 because they have this type of quarterback. And if he's playing, I think it's over for the rest of the league. But you look at the rest of the league. You have Arizona and Noah Fafita. You have Kansas State. Avery Johnson, the quarterback that I am looking forward to watching the most. You have Kansas with Jalen Daniels coming back. Mm -hmm. I hope he is healthy. You have Texas Tech. You have KJ Jefferson with UCF. And then you have Shadour Sanders, which may be the most intriguing quarterback or most intriguing team, honestly, in the Big 12 next year. But however, I don't know what teams I necessarily trust because can I trust Oklahoma State to do what they did last year? And I have no idea what's happening at the quarterback position. I think they have a great defense. I think they have the best head coach in the league, but I'm not necessarily sure. Utah is the most sure thing, I think, in this league. They showed what they can do in the Pac-12 over the last three years, winning two conference titles. They enter in with one of the best head coaches in the league and probably the best quarterback in the league. So give me Utah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Oklahoma State's got 10 returners on offense, and certainly the quarterback conversation for them is one that has been controversial for the last couple of years under Mike Gundy and what exactly they want to do. You know, Spencer Sanders and how that all shook out with him going to Ole Miss and Alan Bowman's existence in this world for his uh, seventh college season that he has been granted. Um, I A West Virginia, you know? A Kansas State who's sitting around there, and even Kansas. I think Kansas is my dark horse favorite because the way their schedule shakes out to actually make the Big 12 championship against Utah. I I wonder, should we bet on a West Virginia this year? Can we trust a, a Kansas State? Do we know enough about Chris Kleiman as a head coach to want to believe in the Wildcats? Like When you look at that middle tier, how do you start to separate the Mountaineers or the Wildcats or the, the Jayhawks or, or even the other Wildcats at Arizona with Fafita and, and the question marks surrounding them? Yeah, I think right now you have Utah and the team that I would have number two right now is Kansas State. And like, obviously, like I, I kind of root more for Kansas State, but I do think they have the quarterback that can just do so many things. He is so dynamic in that. Now, that can, I, can, I, can I pause you there for one second? I, I want to give a really big boat of confidence to Chris Kleiman here because you're saying Kansas State, they lost a lot in the portal, which you could argue is positive attrition. They have a technically a first year starter at quarterback and they don't have as many of the offensive weapons as they did last year. Like This isn't a rebuild for Kansas State, obviously, but they aren't roster-wise as proven as they were last season yet, though you're still buying the Wildcats. That says a lot about the head coach. Yeah, and I really think it says a lot about the culture because you look at Arizona, new head coach. Okay, I trust they have a great quarterback play, but they have to install a whole lot of new things. Kansas, yeah. I think Kansas is, you were right about the dark horse. I think that's a team I really do trust because they do have Jalen Daniels. And even though they lost Andy Kothanicki, who is Mm -hmm. one of the best offensive minds just in college football. When I worked for Big Buck Radio, we had him on. Like after three minutes during a 15 minute interview, like in our text chat, we were like, he's going to be a head coach one day and there's nothing we can do about it because he's going to be really good. But when it comes to Kansas state, like you're definitely right. Like they even lose Cooper BB. They lose their play caller and uh, Colin Klein. Like it is a lot of change there, but I do trust Chris, Chris Kleiman so much to instill that culture because I think when you watch Kansas state football, you kind of know exactly what you're going to get. You're going to get a team that plays really hard. You get a team that's going to do the things fundamentally sound in the right ways. And you also get really good defense. And now you get Avery Johnson, who I think is like 
this dynamic person like with his feet and also, you know, as a quarterback with his arm, I do worry about who they're going to, he's going to be passing, you know, like yeah. throwing the ball to, but that's what I love about Kansas state. Is there's so many players that are undervalued there that rise up because Chris Kleiman is one of the best developers of talent in this entire league. Also a team to watch for. And I, I think we could spend an hour on, but we definitely won't because of uh, how attention spans and people on YouTube and content work, but Colorado, there's not a more interesting team again in college football. I understand mm-hmm. Deion Sanders, but you have Shadur Sanders, you know, being the quarterback, probably going to be the face of the NCAA video game or EA sports video game. And they were the number two team in the transfer portal, according to on three. Like, honestly, last year we saw that like about like 40 different players come and go, but 25 players coming in. A lot of them are really highly rated from good schools. That's a team I'm definitely keeping. And they also have the best five-star talent in the league when you have Travis Hunter and now Shadur Sanders, who is just probably going to be a Heisman favorite. So I'm, I'm keeping an eye on Colorado to enter that upper echelon of teams. Sources have said that Colorado has 299 overall football players in Travis Hunter and Shador Sanders on the new video game, which wow. is good. That's that's pretty, which makes sense. Like one of the best quarterbacks in the country in a league filled with good quarterbacks. Before we move on, this has been a long conversation about football, but it's making me happy. It's making me tickle uh, in the tick. Oh, by the way, Ben Sinnott, RIP. He ain't yeah. dead yet, but for when he dies, hopefully like 50 years down the line or, or more, um, it's going to suck to see Kansas State without him. But let's go like to that weird Less than middle of the pack with like a BYU, a TCU, who we haven't mentioned very much, or UCF, even Texas Tech. What do you do with those guys that are hanging around there? Like, Can anybody there make their way into the top three in the league? I feel like for the past three years, we've been saying Texas Tech is the dark horse so much. Uh, well, really, since Joe McGuire took over. Yeah, yeah, true, true. And Taj Brooks, I don't know how many years he's in college, but he's like, I'm, I'm coming back. It's like, all he's right. 45 years old, has three kids. And the thing about Texas Tech, like Joey McGuire, excellent recruiter. I think he's done such a good way of like, now he has a five-star talent in his team. And also like when we had him on Big 12 Radio, he always talked about how we put an emphasis on getting just big dudes. Just like, and I think that's a great way to operate as a football team and as a college football team. Hey, we're just going to get really large human beings so they can block human beings and also run over human beings. So good for Texas Tech. But the, the biggest issue about Texas Tech has been quarterback and the health of the quarterback. They can protect Baron Morton, and if Baron Morton can be healthy, watch out for Texas Tech. But the rest of the league, I do think there's going to be some stinkers this year. And I think one of them is your your your, your BYU Bears. Uh, or not BYU Bears, uh, Baylor Bears. Sorry about that. Both of them could be stinkers this year, though. The no, BYU is going to be good. I believe in religious schools Bohannon. in the conference. Or Jake Ratzeloff, the first Jewish starting quarterback in big in in BYU history. I'm not sure Big Twelve, but maybe by the way. Um, now Brett Yormark, he is our our he's our guy. You know, he's Senor Brett taking us down to Mexico City, and you've got some fat opinions on that here on Locked On Big Twelve, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. P H A T, your team every day. Hey. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel's where I go to make money. The other day, I was like, ah, rent is coming up. What can I do? I can go to the MLB where guys are doing that baseball. There's a guy. I can't tell you his first name. I can't tell you his first name. Last name, Crochet for the Chicago White Sox. And I said, this guy's got a cool name. What if he struck out nine of the Atlanta Braves? And that is exactly what he did at like plus 450. So I said, hey, FanDuel. Rent's coming up. Can I give you 20 bucks for this? And they said, give us 20 bucks. We'll give you over $100 back if it hits. And it did. Brian Crochet? Maybe? Maybe? At FanDuel right now, there is no time. You can put a $5 bet on any of the Jazz you want to put it on. Even the Utah Jazz. And if it hits, you get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. 200 bucks. You can use it in the tourney, MLB, NBA, NHL, so much more. FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a big win. FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook. Go to FanDuel.com forward slash locked on today. 